in the name of personal injury law. The new auto no-fault law has made it more complicated for auto accident survivors to pursue and protect their legal rights. I'm here today with Katie Tucker and Steve Sinus of the Sinus Dramus Law Firm. They're personal injury attorneys and they want to share with you 10 warnings to help auto accident survivors under this new complicated law. Welcome Katie and Steve. Thank you, Lisa, for having us. Thank you for having us. We're gonna jump right into those warnings. Warning number one, your insurance company might try to void your policy after a crash and deny all your claims. Yeah, so when people are injured and they come talk to us at, at our firm, uh, sometimes we have situations where people are facing um, a defense from their insurance company that at the time they sold them the policy, the person somehow didn't disclose the appropriate information, misrepresented about something about where they were living, whatever it may be, but there are these arguments the insurance companies can make that if they find out that you were not completely forthright with everything when you bought your policy, at the time when you are making a claim under that policy, they then say the policy was taken out uh, under a misrepresentation or fraud, and they can void the policy and then say they're not gonna pay you anything for your crash, and that's a very hard conversation to have with people following a crash. So people have to watch out for that, and that means that you really have to be truthful and disclose everything when you buy auto insurance. Okay, warning number two. You must know whether your no-fault insurance is coordinated or uncoordinated with your health benefits. Yes, Lisa, it's incredibly important to know whether you have purchased uncoordinated or coordinated no-fault insurance coverage because it very well may affect how and whether your benefits will get paid. Under coordinated no-fault coverage, an auto accident survivor is actually required to seek um, coverage from their health insurer before turning to their no-fault insurer for payment of their medical bills. By contrast, if you've purchased uncoordinated medical coverage, which is what we recommend, your no-fault insurer is liable for payment of the benefits regardless of whether you have health insurance or whether that insurance covers the benefits at issue. And again, incredibly important to know, Lisa, because if you are not um, aware of what type of coverage you have and you're not following the proper rules for pursuing payment of your medical bills, your medical bills may not get paid. And if that happens, you probably are gonna lose out on access to critical care services. So very, very important to know and to um, be cognizant of as you move forward. Warning number three, you must know whether your no-fault medical expenses coverage is limited or unlimited. Yeah, so under the new auto no-fault law, you only get lifetime no-fault coverage if you buy it. And you, what you need to do if you're injured is understand what are your limits, if any, to your medical expense coverage, because that is really gonna tell you the amount of money that you're working with to pay for your care. So when you're injured, you have to be able to do the analysis of what limits are you subject to, and it can be complicated under the law, but you have to know that early on so you can make the right decisions about how you're gonna fund your medical care. Warning number four, you must notify the proper no-fault insurance carrier within one year of the crash. Yes, Lisa, this is known as the one-year notice rule, and this has actually existed predating the amendments to the law, but you must notify the proper no-fault insurer within one year in writing of the date of the crash. And it's really important that you know which insurer to notify. Generally speaking, a claimant, an auto accident survivor, is going to recover benefits from their own no-fault insurer, but there are many notable exceptions to this. There are complicated priority rules under the statute that you need to be aware of. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you know which insurer is responsible for benefits and that you are notifying that insurer within one year. And if you fail to do so, unfortunately, you are going to probably lose out on your ability to recover any benefits. So this is a really, really critical um, uh, warning to heed. Warning number five, you must sue a no-fault insurer with one within a year of them denying benefits. Yes, Lisa, just like the one-year notice rule, um, this is actually called the one-year back rule. And under this rule, um, a, an auto accident victim must pursue legal action within one year of the date that an expense was incurred or they lose out on the right to to recover that expense altogether. So if your bills are not being paid, it's really critical that you're tracking that um, and you are tracking the one-year deadline because if you don't file a lawsuit or seek legal action, pursue legal action within that one year, you may never be able to recover those benefits. Warning number six, you may have important rights against at-fault drivers that are complicated to pursue. Yeah, so the way the no-fault law works, we buy no-fault insurance and that covers our medical expenses to a certain extent, our wage loss to a certain extent, and some household services that we may need if we're injured. 
uh, in, in reality, people have losses that are outside of their no-fault coverage. And if you have limited medical expenses uh, on your no-fault coverage, you will then need to pursue a recovery a, a, against the at-fault driver for your uncovered medical expenses, which you can do. But that's a complicated claim to make under this new law. It's hard to know when that right is triggered. There are certain principles that haven't been established yet by the courts. So that part of the claims against the at-fault driver is complicated. And you also have a right to, to pursue non-economic loss or otherwise known as pain and suffering damages. But you have to meet a certain threshold standard. And there are nuances to that legal test. So if you're asking yourself, can I pursue pain and suffering damages? The answer is maybe if you satisfy these complicated legal standards. Okay. Warning number seven you can only recover up to $3,000 of your vehicle damage from an at-fault driver. This is one that always surprises people. So uh, somebody else causes the crash and say your vehicle has $10,000 of vehicle damage. You would think the at-fault driver has to pay it all. They have to pay no more than $3,000 for your vehicle damage. And the rest has to come from your collision coverage that you bought on your own vehicle. And if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to recover anything other than the $3,000 from the at-fault driver. Okay, warning number eight, your medical providers are now being paid much less for auto accident related care and treatment. Yes, Lisa, one of the most concerning features of this new amended law, and this actually just took effect as of July 1st, 2021, is a series of fee schedules that were imposed by the legislature, which significantly reduced, in most cases, reimbursement for medical providers rendering treatment to auto accident victims. And in some cases, that reimbursement's been reduced by as much as 45%. So under the old version of the law, medical providers were, be enti were entitled to be uh, paid their reasonable charges for accident related care. Now, under the amended version of the law, medical providers rendering treatment to auto accident victims um, may face cuts in reimbursement as high as, as 45%. So unfortunately, um, I think what we're going to see is some medical providers uh, either forced to shut their doors, um, as we actually already have started to see in Michigan, which is very upsetting and, and concerning and for multiple reasons, um, but also for those who are able to continue to provide care, they may choose to be in the very difficult position of being forced to limit the number of auto accident victims they treat or the amount of care that they can render to those victims. So access to care is really being inhibited. Warning number nine, there are new limitations on certain types of auto accident related care and treatment care resources. Yeah, so parts of this law, you know, the reduced reimbursement rates to medical providers, but there are also new rules about which type of providers can be paid and accreditation requirements. And there's a lot of ambiguity about that. So certain providers out there might not be able to get paid through no-fault insurance because of these new rules. There are also limitations on how much family members and friends can be paid for nursing care they provide a loved one in the home. It's a limitation of 56 hours a week. So when families are trying to figure out who's gonna care for the person, they have to know there are limitations on how much they can be paid and it makes it a more complicated uh, situation for them to figure out. Okay, warning number 10. There are new government regulations that can now apply to auto accident related care and treatment. Yes, Lisa, as Steve mentioned, there is a series of new limitations. We have the fee schedule limitations on reimbursement, the uh, limitations that Steve mentioned, but also a set of limitations in the form of a new set of administrative rules that um, significantly affect how, when, and whether benefits will be paid, whether a, a patient, whether an auto accident victim is actually able to access care services. So these new regulations will significantly impact um, access to care for auto accident victims, and, and they're very concerning for many reasons. Okay, well, I'm gonna add a warning number 11. Do not go it alone. If you are an injured in an auto accident, you really need to bring on an auto accident attorney because these warnings should terrify everybody. You need to know what you're doing and, and regular people like myself would not be able to do that without an attorney. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you so much for having us. In the Name of Personal Injury Law is brought to you by the Sinus Dramus Law Firm.